<laughs> it's Glyn Pennell. Good morning. <laughs> I'm going to call you Chamo this morning, being I'm. Uh, what's, what did you call me at the start? Uh, squadron leader and wing commander. Well, that's promotion of ever. I, I, I tell you what, it's it's pretty impressive that though. It's yeah, well, impressive. it's not a fashion statement. Let's get that straight. Go on then. Tell us what, what it's for. While we do, while we're doing this dish, so let's what? get the. Okay. Let's get the uh, the squash soup on first. Right. You're going to chop that. I'll do the carrots. Yeah. So we're going to sweat some shots off. Yeah. And to start the soup, we should start any good soup with some some onions and some garlic and some carrots. But the reason why you do look like that it is for a good cause, then. It's for a good cause, yeah. yeah. The whole of the Pernal's kitchen. It, basically, November is man month where men, proper men, grow moustaches, um, and <laughs> we we get <laughs> sponsored. You know, we get sponsored to do it in. You know, it's called Movember, so, and we're called Mo Bros. So if you see another man in the street with a, fat, with a fine, handsome caterpillar on his top lip, you give him a nod. <laughs> you know? I'm obviously missing something here, aren't I? Well, James, I did <laughs> mention the man thing at the start, so I don't know if we're missing that thing. <laughs> Damn. Right, anyway, on with your carrots. On with my carrots, Chef. Yeah. You know, we just, um, so we've done that in, in uh, Pernal's, but also, um, at the other restaurant, the Asquith, which opened last time I was here, but yeah. I've just opened uh, a cocktail bar, so all the cocktail um, waiters, not the waitresses, have all done in the moustaches as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there are a few hairy women in Birmingham, but they don't work at my restaurant. <laughs> Damn. Well, I certainly don't live with Right, my... what's gone in the pan? <laughs> That's right, Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble. Hey, listen, I live in trouble. <laughs> I just want you to come with me into trouble. <laughs> no way. <laughs> right, what's got in here, then? So, basically, we've got um, our butternut squash, our shallots, yep. our carrots, a bit of garlic. Can you use other spots? Can you use pumpkins? Can you use other sort of, you know... Yeah, fun, the, the, green, the small green pumpkins are actually fantastic for soup. Because now's the time of year, isn't it? Exactly. So, around, you know. and, and when, when, um, when, it, when I was, well, knew I was coming out, I wanted to do something a little bit simple this time, that somebody could have a go at do at home rather yeah. than black pudding crumble and yeah, cornflakes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what you see. Yeah, right. That's what I the stocking. Right, OK, so <laughs> do you want to grab me some... Uh, so we've got the stocking. Right, because this, th there's loads of different types of squashes out there. This is the butternut squash. That I believe most of it comes from Kenya. It does. South Africa, but most well, of the uh, squashes that we get. But you can get the old onion squashes and all manner of different yeah, sort of Yeah, the spaghetti types. ones. Um, mm. All manner of different we stuff. We use well. called cream of the crop at the moment. It's delicious. Yeah. Absolutely, it's like an acorn shape, and it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, some weird shaped stuff, but it's... There you go. And they grow really easily. You don't sure. need to plant at home, nobody. Yeah. So what we do really well on a compost heap. That's where they go. Well, uh, um, not paying attention, but that's really good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Go on. I just, um, just want to get this squash in. So basically, it's the same theory as when you do a baked potato. So you put the salt on the bottom of the tray. Yeah. And then. You now this is this is just the, the molden salt, or what is yeah, it? Can, to be honest with you, the, the cheaper industrial salt's better. Yeah. You know, right. the really big, really coarse cool stuff. But this is molden, which is which is fine. What you mean, grit? Yeah, like proper stuff that you put on your plate. You know, on your plate. <laughs> 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 so you put that. It's just the same theory of. Um, as a baked potato, you're drawing all the moisture out and you're just drying it out so you retain the flavour. I'm going to dice that, I'm going to put that in the soup as the garnish. Right, I'm going to put in sage and... Whack that in there, James, yeah. In here. There you go. Bit of seasoning in there as well. So, there I'll dice the shots. If you want to start dicing the, um... Chopping some of the herb for the persillade, which persillade is, um, a mix of herbs. So we've got sage, tarragon, parsley, got a little bit of chopped garlic, and... Got some garlic in that soup as well, the don't soup, you? The garlic's in there, James. There you go. That's yeah. how quick I was. You see that? <laughs> you obviously <laughs> never. Um, so, yeah, the cocktail bar. I was going to want to make a cocktail bar. I wasn't today. talking about the cocktail bar, but you're going to promote it. Go on then. I'm not promoting it. I'm fascinated because they call themselves mixologists. That's right, yeah. I just call them barmen. <laughs> and when but they mix right. things, they muddle, don't they? Yeah, they do. They all this things. sort of stuff and that, and you know. It's done, <laughs> Don't put an umbrella in my pint, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't having it yet, not with this moustache anyway. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's the same theory as, 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 as cooking, really, so... Which, which Do you get involved in any of the cocktail recipes? No, I leave them too. I just drink them. <laughs> but there is food in there, though, isn't there? Yeah, I've got a, The other thing is that the restaurant uh, um, that's in, within, within the, the same venue, is, uh, it's called the Asquith, and I've got a fantastic young team, which all of them have previously worked for me, at Jessica's, your one-star restaurant they had, and Pernal's. And they got to a stage where they went off and did other things, and they come back to the area, and I wanted to, to set up another independent restaurant 
where they can yeah. so they can virtually run it with me over overseeing it. I've got Jason and Julia both worked in Michelin star restaurants as well. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's exciting to see. Don't get me wrong, I'm going bald and grey over it, but it's exciting to see young people have a real good go. Like. Yeah, but there's a li on Birmingham, there's a there's a sort of a big food revolution going on in Birmingham, isn't there, really? And I, I started it. I you started, started, started it? <laughs> you st but there are, there are a few growing up there, aren't they? There is. It's, it's fantastic, really. It's, um, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, you know, Birmingham was a bit of a dump, to be honest with you. Do you know what I mean? I've learned, lived in Birmingham all my life, and uh, it was a bit rough, sort of looking, but now they've developed it, and you now we even get people like James Martin come down to see us, don't we? <laughs> Rather than yeah. driving through it, they're driving to it now. That's yeah, and we actually pay £25 to eat cornflakes, is what you gave me last time. Uh, I did, yes, James, but there was, another, there was some more courses as well. <laughs> Let's pick on the cornflakes. But this is one of your traditional... It was quite fascinating to eat, I have to say, but... T tell us about that dish, because it's one of your specialities, isn't it? Yeah, one of my signature dishes <laughs> is, uh, basically, it's uh, slow-cooked... Uh, it's, it's moved on since the last time you come, James. All right, it's moved on. What are we on to cocoa pops now? Or what? No, 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 rice krispies. No, no, no. We're um, basically uh, a slow comfy the haddock. I flake it in the bottom of the bowl now, cooked in curry oil, and then that's covered with a smoked haddock, milk, foam. So we um, infuse the milk uh, with the haddock because uh, milk is porous. Then we thicken the milk with xanthan gum, and then we put it into a gun, and it sprays out like a really airy sort of moussey. Yeah. And then we serve it with uh, spiced cornflakes and a poached egg yolk. It's nice, you cooked it all for us. Posh, great British man. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's a... basically, I'm off, I'm off a council state and it is my mum's haddock and eggs. <laughs> Put in a blender <laughs> and throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Maybe you should come around at my mum's house, James, and she'll cook it for you. Yeah, right. Uh, remember See how like excited she is. Wait a minute. Right, remember, if you'd like to ask a question on the show, then call this number. That's 8716 41 41 41. Calls cost 10 p a minute from a BT line line. Mobiles and other networks may vary in a few weeks. We'll be able to put your questions to us live a little later on. And don't forget, you can find Glyn's recipe, along with all the other studio recipes from today's show, on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right, I'm interested, intrigued about these eggs, because we want to get oh, these on to, to cook, so, do you? Yeah, these take... These take uh, yeah. Sure, no time at all. So, basically... So you're, you're poaching the egg yolks. Because all we want is the richness. We're, we're going to try not to put too much cream in this, because, you, you know, you fall foul to put lots and lots of cream, and you're losing the vibrant flavour of the fresh... Not too much, Chef. <laughs> Just think of World War One. There was no cream men, chef. <laughs> Just people like me. <laughs> oh well, oh well. Oh. Go on then with the eggs. So basically, I don't want the whites. I'm not a big fan of egg whites. Only in meringue. Right, right. So I like the, the the really sort of the texture of the egg yolk. Um, it's like a sauce that you could never make, you know. So we're going to do that to rich in the soup up. Right now, you just boil the water, taking it off the heat. Take it off. So yeah. So it's around about it's sort of. <coughs> 65, 70 degrees. Right. So you just want the egg basically to warm through the yolk. So it's not aggressively cooking it, it's just gently just sitting there, bathing in the, the, in the water. I don't think you can oh, see that in it. So it's <laughs> gently just, just sort of rolling around saying, oh, damn, it's warm. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> right, now I'm going to chop the, um, this, the, uh, the roast. So I've got a lovely sort of... Um, right, I'm going to pop this lot in the blender. Really nice sort of roast, caramelised. Soft butternut squash. There you go. We'll get that on the heat. <coughs> James. So you've got about Sorry. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. OK, let's yeah. do it. What cheese are you using for this, Glenn? It's cheddar, is it? Cheese? What, what cheese are you using? Uh, cheddar. Any I'm going to grab a little bit over. So, I use cheddar, but I use... We have used in the past um, <coughs> a burke as well. I like to try and use, obviously, English cheeses. We didn't need that one, James. <laughs> we don't need that one, James. Don't worry, carry on. So the egg yolks. So that that salting, salt baking, that uh, salt baking the squash. Uh, the squash. You can yeah. do that with celeriac and all manner of different yeah. stuff. Kind of beetroot, which is really nice. And this what what goes in the oven for about forty-five minutes, something like that. Uh, yeah, forty-five minutes, just until it's nice and soft. Yeah, and then. Soup's there, ready. That's not there, James. There you go. There you go. And that's just the garlic, the all those herbs, and the yeah. So this is a rustic up. dish you could knock up, knock up at, uh, at home, especially this time of year. Bit of olive oil there, please, James. 
And there we go, the veloute. And outside. Walking the dog, straight back in. There you go. There you go. So remind us what that is again. So the veloute of uh, butternut squash with uh, poached egg yolk, persillade and English cheddar. Easy as that. There you go. <coughs> right. You get to dive into this. Fantastic. The old, um, and the egg, I presume, if you just break it down the centre, it just okay. <coughs> helps with the texture of the, uh, yep, the, the soup, soup as well. You can see that richness. There's a little bit to top of it, so we'll get a taste. What do you reckon? It always worries me when they don't sound anything. <laughs> but it's a dish that, you know, literally we've done, we've done that in, what, six or seven minutes? Nice yeah, and quick. yeah. It's super easy, nice and sort of rich. This time of year. It's leader. It is pretty good. Absolutely, yeah. It's beautiful. It is pretty good. <laughs> the idea is you pass it down, Russell. Well, they dive in. We need some wine to go with this. Warms the cockles of the heart. <laughs> we will set our wine expert Susie Atkins to Somerset this week. So what does he choose to go with Glyn's smashing squash soup? It's good. I'm at Taunton Castle, home to the Museum of Somerset. I'm going to head over the walls into town to find the best wines for today's dishes. Glyn, you've made a soft, soothing winter warmer with your squash, and my challenge is to find a ripe, rounded white to match with it. I'm zooming in on the generously fruity flavours of Chardonnay, but something like this Australian example, although delicious, I think would be a bit overwhelming for this dish. So instead, I'm heading to France. And the wine I've chosen is the Carve de Luni Macon Village Les Pierres Blanches. Chardonnays from the Burgundy region of France have less sweet tropical fruit than the New World versions, but more creamy, buttery notes, and those work a treat here. Oh, there's kind of notes of citrus and peach, but this is quite gently scented. This is still quite a youthful wine, and it's got enough fresh vitality to complement the persillade and cut through the soup. But it finishes on this rounded, buttery note, and I think that's crucial to match up with the egg yolks, the cheese, and, of course, those lovely cubes of roasted squash. Glyn, this is a wonderfully tempting dish for the autumn, and here I've got a perfectly balanced white burgundy to match it. Cheers. 